fair warning. This is going to be weirder than usual. Can't be helped. You called me. So here I am. I know I shut you out sometimes. I'm always glad to hear from you. It's just that I get my hopes up. So many times it's led to nothing. I found nothing. It's like we live in a room and there's a poster on the wall. We stare at it and we think that's the whole world. The room and the poster. The picture is something nice. A landscape, a famous person. Like in that movie, what is it called? The prison movie. The room's a cell and the picture, it's different. For each of us, it can be beautiful or terrible, but we're all transfixed. But it's all a lie, something to distract us from the truth. They're lying to us. We are lying to ourselves. The room's not the world. The world is much bigger and much stranger. There's a hole hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? This seal. I saw it a long time ago. I keep seeing it in my dreams. Federal Bureau of Control. All these years I've been looking for them and they were hiding in plain sight. the job. Janitor's assistant. You need to go to the interview. Go that way to the elevator. Thanks. Elevator that way. 
Got it. Very good. I'm off to him. The janitor, by the way. You'll work for me. You can say I sent you. If they don't hire you, Peter, you are no hell of it. There be work for the axe. Take them behind the sauna, you all out. I've done enough night shift loner jobs to know it makes us come off weird. Ati the janitor is a friendly face in my book. Better than somebody with no face at all. <laughs> Think about it. No face. But that said, I know what you're thinking. If there's an axe murderer around, that's him. The cell and the poster. I was 11 years old the first time I saw behind the poster. They told me I imagined it. I've been trying to pull it down ever since. Will you help? Did I lose you there for a moment? You know what's on my mind. My baby brother, Dylan. Seventeen years since the men of this bureau took him. Results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP, a very powerful one. Ingrained in the Bureau's DNA, a key component in our prime candidate program. Come out of that Russian roulette a winner and you, <laughs> you're it. Objects of power 
can cause or be results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. A side note, remember to cover their connection to the astral plane as well. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP, a very powerful one. Ingrained in the Bureau's DNA, a key component in our prime candidate program. Come out of that Russian roulette a winner and you, <laughs> you're it. Lose and you're, well, fired. Thank you. I'm Dr. Darling, head of research, Federal Bureau of Control. The same gun. the pyramid spoke to me and it was just noise and I understood every word and this gun's alive you know what I'm happy happy to be here things have quieted down outside is it safe to go
Secure line of communication. Guidance. Reach the hotline. The hotline. Okay. okay. Reminder, if you experience an unanticipated building shift, follow these simple steps. 1. Search the room for any altered items or objects of power. 2. Carry the altered item or object of power to the nearest safe room. 3. Wait for bureau staff to find you and the object. If there are no altered items or objects of power in the vicinity, then, reach your supervisor via the nearest intercom and await further instructions. Thank you for your attention. If you experience an unanticipated building shift, follow these simple steps. 1. Search the room for any altered items or objects of power. 2. Carry the altered item or object of power to the nearest safe room. sound that tried to invade me earlier. The hiss burrowing into everything in this place. Is the hiss your enemy? Alright, it's our enemy. That babble's contagious. It burrows in like an infuriating melody that makes you hum it over and over.
Cleanse the control point. What does that mean? Help me fix it. I can't tell you how happy I am to talk to somebody sane. The feeling's mutual. Yeah, I'm Pope, Emily Pope, I'm Dr. Darling's assistant. My turn. Should I lie? Jesse Faden. I'm just visiting. I should have lied. Oh shit! You're the new director. Hold on, we're coming out. Director, Faden. Call me Jesse. Okay, Jesse. I'm Emily. Look, somehow, this hostile force, this hiss, that works? Somehow the hiss managed to infiltrate the building without any warning. And just like that, my name for it is official. The hiss. Like the sound of poison gas leaking in. We're in full lockdown. It seems to have spread everywhere and to everyone, not protected by an HRA. And, extraordinarily, you. You are the director, and that makes you special by definition. Trench is no longer the director, obviously. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. This whole situation is just a lot. Trench is dead. Shot. Ah. I found his body. And the gun. Do I tell her it looked like a suicide? The service weapon. Also, and this can sound crazy, but he keeps appearing to me, saying things. It's hard to make out, but he told me to cleanse the control point, push the hiss out. The whole room shifted around. You did that? And you entered the building when it was already in the lockdown before you became the new director? How? I'm not ready to tell her about you yet. A janitor let me in. <laughs> I love it. This is fucking unbelievable. It's... I can't even... Ugh, look, Jesse, I have a million questions, and you probably have a million more. Like, do you know my brother Dylan? Not yet. But there's something I need to ask you to do first. If you can cleanse a control point, then you can maybe cure those infected or possessed by the hiss. Because if that's possible, our options are very different. Emily Pope. I don't know her, but I like her already. She's the opposite of the faceless agency I've blamed for what happened to me for so long. But I can't trust her yet. Or rather, the Bureau she's a part of. Yes. I can try. I'm speaking for you, of course. We can try it together. Okay. You with me? We did it before. Push the hiss out.
has burrowed too deep. Ripping it out rips them apart. Jesse, over here. I can't cleanse them. I saw. It was worth a shot. Thank you, Director. Jesse. I'm gonna tell her why I'm here. I'll risk it. Listen. The Bureau was involved in an incident in my hometown, Ordinary, 17 years ago. The Bureau came in and covered the whole thing up. I've been looking for this place for a long time. That's enough. Maybe that's too much already. I can't tell her about Dylan and the rest yet. I've seen mentions of an Altered World event case dealing with Ordinary. You were at Ground Zero as a child? It was one of the big ones, and before my time. And very classified. I can try to dig out some old files for you. My boss, Casper Darling, would know, but he's missing. I think he knew this was coming, or suspected. He came up with the HRAs, the Hedron Resonance Amplifiers. I think they're what saved us. A few of us. And Director Trench would know. Trench. The ghost, or whatever he is. He mentioned something called the hotline. Said I should find it. It's another object of power, like the gun. An old Bakelite telephone. A direct line of communication between the director and the board. Maybe he can talk to you more clearly through that. I mean, Trench has years and years of experience. He might know how to destroy the Hiss. Where is the hotline? It's kept in the communications department through the mailroom. It's part of this sector, so we can access it even with the lockdown in place. We'll get the door open for you. Okay, that's my next stop. That's Tomasi's department. He's the head of communications. I don't think he had an HRA. He kind of made a point about not wearing one earlier. Keep an eye out. They call me the director. But that's not me. I'm not a director type. I'm not a leader. Why am I here? I think you already know. Yes, I came for my brother, but there are other reasons too. I said I was looking for answers, but I might never understand them. I'm not looking for proof, this is already it, more than enough. No matter what they told me all those years, I know it's real now. I didn't imagine this. I want to be a part of this world. What scares me shitless is that I finally found it. Only to see the hiss destroy it all. anything you want to know. There are no stupid questions. The door to the comms department is just outside the boardroom back in the lobby. They should have gotten it open by now. Follow the signs to the mailroom. You can get to the hotline containment chamber through there. Good luck, Jesse. See you back here once you have the hotline. The hotline should be in the communications department. Where did the Hiss come from? I'm not sure. You said the Hiss was here when you entered. Did you see anything like that outside before you came in? No. No, just inside. The source is internal, then. See, the oldest house is a sprawling complex with openings to other places as well. I don't even know where to start looking. But in the context, it's good news. The lockdown holds. The Hiss escaping the building would be the end. 
pretty shitty world out there if you ask me, but I wouldn't want the Hiss to destroy it. I'm with you on that, Emily. You mentioned the oldest house. What is it? This building, the bureau headquarters, the oldest house, is a shifting place. You've seen it. It transcends its physical limits. I've been to New York a few times. How didn't I notice this place? It's an attribute of the building. This is a place of power. The oldest house doesn't like attention, so unless you're purposely trying to find it, you don't, which is perfect for us. The work we do here is essential, but unstable. The Bureau prefers not to be noticed. And we need strong walls to make sure nothing gets out. So without you, I never would have found the front door. Okay. This trench guy. I keep hearing him in my head. Is he a ghost? Haunting me? I doubt we're talking about a ghost in the traditional sense, but an echo may be. See, if he was killed by the service weapon, your gun, maybe it's his final thoughts recorded by the bullet in his brain, like a, a deep space probe sending back data. But that's just a hypothesis on my part. I'd need the gun to research it. But you better hold on to that, given the circumstances. I think I will. Yeah. Can you tell me what an object of power is exactly? This is all, well, new to me. <laughs> Don't worry, I love going over the basics. So objects of power are mundane objects that house paranatural energies and have developed a link to the astral plane and can thus be controlled, which is what differentiates them from altered items, which are still housings of paranatural forces, but are more volatile and cannot be bound in the peri-utilitarian sense. Got it? Did she memorize this? Got it. Thanks. So HRA stop you from becoming Hiss? Well, it seems that way. I mean, I hadn't even heard of an HRA until a few weeks ago when Dr. Darling started handing them out. Well, I began analyzing mine as soon as I got it. I mean, each one it seems to emit a powerful short range frequency way beyond anything I've ever seen. Doesn't the timing seem suspicious? I thought that too. Dr. Darling usually likes to unveil his latest breakthrough in big presentations. With these, he just passed them out. Yeah, his behavior makes me wonder what exactly he knew. Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know.
There it is again. A welcome message. Overpowering here. You don't want me anywhere near it. I'm with you on that.
indications are on the right track. Is wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it, a perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on, and they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. Object of power. Such a place of last strong We need to cleanse it. Harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. They're pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Gone. Cut off. I got it. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mailroom.
Maybe there's a key nearby. This must open the door.
fine now. Great. Stay focused. The hotline should be past the mailroom. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicious Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed. Inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have, and the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. 
No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights, but when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. The hotline can't be far now. Alberto Tomasi, head of con. The hiss got him. All right, take this down. The situation in... All right, take this down. This... Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hand of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but they that on some stupid noise guns. <laughs> Thank God no local doctor was Inside a U.S. Embassy. Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Hey, are you still recording this? before? No. I've stayed at a lot of roadside motels across the country, on the road, on the run, under the radar. This feels like all of them, like something recognized from a dream. Hello? Anyone here?
It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is, under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. A director needs a team, my management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Some even better. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. But things change when you become director. reach Trench. Well, listen to him. He feels more like an echo. An echo with important info. I need to get back to Emily. Ring, ring. It's Dr. Darling calling. In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring and picked it up, going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered, and the handful of witnesses required extensive memory repression therapy. It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. Our very own Ouija board. Only the director can answer it safely, and what he hears is kept classified. It took us a long time. Something's coming. The whispers growing louder. The worst winter storm in Bureau history. Retribution for my sins. Our sins. This threat could destroy the Bureau. Everything I've built. Destroy me. A web spun turning this place against me. I catch glimpses of it in the corner of my eye. It's just out of reach. Elusive. It's clever. A perverse game of hide-and-seek. Is this part of an attack? Obfuscating the facts. Dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. 
I need answers. I haven't heard back from Darling. I fear for my friend, my closest ally. I think we made a terrible mistake all those years ago. That thing he studies is putting us all in danger. It's my duty as director to keep the Bureau safe. It'll be difficult. What's done can't be undone. There's no easy fix. Magical thinking is a requirement for survival. Pain and suffering are mandatory. To change things, you have to break yourself. I don't know if I have the strength. I'm old and weak. I'm afraid. I can see my hands trembling. I'm losing control. It took us a long time to learn how to stabilize the control points, the ley lines, the meridians of the oldest house. Darling found a way to soothe this beast. We discovered we must cleanse control points of all interference. It's my duty as the director, like Northmore before me. I couldn't manage it in my own house, at my home. I'll damn well do it here. Without the control points, the oldest house would swallow us alive. We'd be sealed inside an endless labyrinth. No one would hear our screams. If an enemy ever managed to corrupt the control points, it'd be over fast, spreading like a cancer, leaping over the fire bricks like a crown of fire. They are the weak point. Darling's right about that. He's wrong about everything else. Dangerously wrong. Suspiciously wrong. Has he been compromised? I can hear the hotline ringing in my dreams, constantly ringing. Ringing so loud I can't hear the voice I'm straining to understand. Why don't I pick up? It's a secure line of communication with the board. They would tell me what I need to know. Do I fear their answers? Would they have warned me of this threat? I didn't see it coming. A traitor in our midst. A conspiracy plotted right behind me. I can't trust anyone. I must assume all my intel has been manipulated. The hotline is the only channel I can trust. Bind it. Control it. The rule and the ritual with objects of power. It can't be tampered with. The lifeline to the astral plane and the board. I must seek guidance. Soon. I'll rest first. I'm so tired. Always tired now. But I must reach the hotline. I think I'm under attack. An attack of dementia, exhaustion. It's a brain cloud making me forget. The hotline. I must reach the hotline. A director needs a team. My management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Some even better. They have proven... People react... strongly... when I tell them about you. Is it too soon to tell Emily? She might be able to help.
Jesse, did you get the hotline? I mean, how is it out there? The comms? The hiss? I... Sorry. You made it. I'm glad. Emily? Let's talk. Of course. I got the hotline. I can make out what Trench is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team. People who knew the Bureau's secrets. Your boss, darling. Tomasi, but he's gone. He has gone. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. She's tough, ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research sector to secure the HRA production. She hasn't come back. Someone who could help us. The other sectors. How do I get there? It's impossible because of the internal lockdown. You can perform a directorial override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can find a way. Jesse, look, with no prep, no training, in this extreme situation, you are doing phenomenally well. And all that and the hiss can't seem to affect you. I mean, I would love to run some tests on you. If you agree, that is. We could find out something that would help us. Tests? I don't know. She might find out about you. But I wouldn't mind understanding more myself. Okay. If you think it will help. Great. I'll check the internal documentation for any lockdown bypasses. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. And I'll look for a way inside the maintenance sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner I reach this override. Hi, Jesse. Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know. Do you hear that? Someone's singing. Where's it coming from? Singing? Sounds like it's coming from the elevator. Stupid. 
What would the Bureau's golden child have to gain from killing the boss? Time to work. Meet me in the main denounce. Like I said before, the janitor is a friendly face. The maintenance sector is the janitor domain. If I can find Ati here, he can help me reach the override. Maybe it was you who got me into the oldest house with the lockdown on. Maybe it was Ati. It felt like he made the elevator appear that took me to Trench's office. Is Ati getting me
The directorial override is right there, in the control room. How do we get there? What's down that way? This makes me nauseous. An object of power. How do you think it got down here? A carousel horse. Why is kid stuff always so creepy?
up with me now. Well done. You got the job. It's place for congratulations. Yippee, satana. It happened in the last drop. I truly need an assistant. Funny thing is, I've been a janitor. I'm more at home in that role than as the director. Only Ati here seems to see that. Yeah, hi, Ati. Look, we need to get the lockdown lifted, otherwise I can't get to the other sectors. Can you help me get to the override? 
Yes, yes, easy peasy. It's just around the corner. But first, we need to get you working. Very small couple of hours job. Something tells me it's going to be more than that. Yeah, yeah, you think there's a dog buried in this? I can tell you are not the yesterday's Krause's son. That's why you're made a great assistant. Very well. I'll hit the facts on the table. I'm not going to say perfectly sure that this house has a vermin problem. A bad one. They've already messed up the cooling pumps. At the power generators of a power plant, Berkele. And the pensioner inside is starting to feel the band around his head tighten. The situation needs to be fixed before the plant blows up and we all disappear like a fart in Sahara, Berkele. Trying my best to keep up with this. Fix the coolant pumps and the power generators, otherwise the power plant will blow? Oh, don't you worry. I've left you clear instructions. You'll catch the end of the thread before I go to my vacation. The work's on the task board here. You can do later, when you have time. Vacation? <laughs> right. Yes, no one's gonna cancel my holiday or seat's gonna rattle. But don't worry at all. You'll take care of it, and soon this crisis is gonna be last winter snow. You better go now, so you don't have to run with your head as your third leg. The door in the back leads to the plant. The door in the back. That's great. Thank you, Ati. the dress, throw it in the fire, burn it all, burn it into a reindeer, not into a moose. Again, if that thing blows up? Power. Explosion. Too much. Director's duty. Keep the lights on. North Moore was director before me. I never wanted his job. I never wanted power. I purposefully avoided it. Didn't trust it. Didn't want to rely on it. North Moor was all about power. A man like an explosion, hungry for authority, for order, for more. Until it was too much. I had to find a solution in the end. Contain the situation. Northmoor never liked me, but he went along with it, to his credit. He didn't really have a choice. I suppose at the end of the day, a director's most basic duty is to keep the lights on. Here's to you, Northmoor. There were no prime candidates waiting in the wings, but I was there. Had been the whole time, keeping my head down, working my ass off. I had nothing to lose. I picked up the gun almost on a dare.
dangerous out here, lady. But go see Chief Arishi. He's just inside. He'll help you. They all have HRAs. We're on the same side. My name is Jesse Faden. I'm here to perform the directorial override to get the lockdown lifted. Yeah, yeah. Chief Arish, FBC Security. I'm just... Oh, hang on. You're the new director. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure, ma'am. Let's skip the formalities, please. Right. Faden, ma'am. Look, as you can probably tell, it's a bit of a shit show down here. We've been holding our ground, but whatever's gotten into our buddies has them wrecking the coolant pumps and the power converters. The NSC keeps overheating, and my crews keep getting shot before they have a chance to make any repairs. NSC? Oh, sorry. Bureau jargon. It's what we call the power plant. You know, the uh, big rumbling metal thing? <laughs> uh, Salvador, head of security, asked me to protect it in case of an attack. See, what's inside is dangerous. The Dr. Darling seemed to know it would be a target. Darling? He's here? No, he came down a few days ago, before everything went to hell. He was out of it. He smelled like a bar mat. He was ranting about vulnerabilities and how he only had one large-scale HRA, but that he needed it somewhere else. Still, at least he gave us these personal HRAs before he left. Hey, did I mention that he was tearing his clothes off? <laughs> Crazy dude. Darling knew the hiss was coming. Listen, I love playing 20 questions as much as the next guy, but we have got to get the water and electrical systems repaired before this baby blows. I'll have my guys unlock the doors out of here for you. I'll take care of it. You stay and keep the hiss away from the plant if you can. The hiss? That's what we're calling him? Oh, that's catchy. Oh, listen, the radios aren't working, so if you find my boss Salvador out there, could you please ask him what the plan is? I'm sure he will have one by now. I'll keep an eye out for him. He sure has a lot of faith in his boss. Try to stay alive. We need those pumps and converters online. She knows. She knows. I just wanted to make sure. When the converters and coolant pumps are working again, we should be able to get this baby back down to a safe temperature. I hope. What do you know about the Hiss? Not much, only what I've seen. Well, they use the same tactics that Marshall and Salvador taught us, which makes me think that the Hiss haven't completely erased the people inside, which is a pretty fucking horrible thought. Or they're just using whatever they find in their victims' heads. In any case, they are really eager to get inside the power plant. Why do you think that is? Shit, I don't know. They want to make my life harder? What do you do here, Arish? Security chief of the maintenance sector. I make sure all the weird shit down here doesn't bother the maintenance crews. Learned everything I know from Salvador. The best security agent this bureau has ever seen. And you like your job? I love it. You know, everyone thinks that maintenance is the lowest rung on the ladder just because we fix pipes instead of writing memos, but I gotta be honest. These are the bravest people in the goddamn building. I'm proud to work with them. I've done a few odd jobs with these kind of folks. They say what they mean. I like that. What exactly is the power plant? Listen, I only know what Salvador told me, but I know it generates all the electricity for the Bureau, and it's got two very simple rules. Rule one, keep it below a certain temperature. Rule two, don't ever, ever open it. Oh, and three, uh, it's classified, so I shouldn't ask. Sounds like secrets are standard operating procedure around here. Oh, yeah. It's all part of the job. What do you know about the service weapon? Not much. The thing is director only. Salvador told me by the time he saw Trench use it. Sounds like that gun can do some serious damage. Yeah, I did see pictures of it once, though, and uh, it looks different to that thing you're carrying. You monitor something? It's new. Is new a good thing? Given the circumstances, I'd say new is our best bet. Do you know this Ati guy? <laughs> of course. He's my favorite coffee break buddy. Dude has got some crazy stories. He probably knows more than anyone else around here. If you can make sense of what he's saying. 
Any idea where he's from? I'm guessing Sweden. Uh, he's from where he's from. Look, there are just some stones that are better left unturned, you know? I should be going. Right. You gotta lock down the lift.
tied up. You need to fix it before the old trick pants inside the plant has a shield fit.
I just read this? Welcome to the Ranger Field Training Course. The course must be completed in this specified amount of time. When you're ready to start, press the button. Is that all, or...? I always did love obstacle courses. Get ready, Ranger. Course starting in five, four, three, two, one. Uh... Go. Sixty seconds remaining. seconds remaining. Course complete. Congratulations, Rainer. Guessing this isn't usually part of the course. It's protecting itself. Break that shield. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Did Ati mean barrels full of hazardous biological material? some environmental regulations on waste disposal, but that's what I'll do. And I'll get it done. My name is Dr. Pierce. Lead, my name is Dr. Pierce, lead researcher of the Parakinesiology Department. I believe that I've discovered a Code Omega paranatural entity residing within the Bureau itself, right under our noses. Darling refused to allocate me the budget or resources, so, so I'm taking matters into my own hands. Let this recording be the proof I need to convince them. The furnace can speak. It's been talking to me for some time now. Listen. Did you hear that? It's a sentient force capable of communicating. I checked and, and there's no record of, of ever installing this furnace. I believe that... Oh, oh, sorry. What? Yes, I can feed you. Uh, what do you eat? I see. Uh, I'll try to find some volunteers. Researcher of the Parakinesiology Department. We need to fix this thing ASAP.
Go to city. Fix it fast. If the plant goes boom, we can throw the spoon in the core. My old enemy, the clock, is blocking the pipes. You need to deal with them. He is very clever. He is trying to sneak in. He got him caught with his hand in the fist trap. Get rid of him. I've ever seen. Like that sound.
let's go lift the lock down.
the lockdown. Could only be lifted by a directorial override. This is... That's it. The other sector should be open now. I think it's time I told Emily why I'm here. I'll risk it. You two should get to know each other. So much is expected from the director. The responsibility, 
the privilege to steer the Bureau into dangerous waters and safely out again. To inspire and lead its people. To protect them. The board is there to advise you, but they want things in return. You hold all this in your old, trembling hands. I had to lose everything before I could see the Bureau is the Director's life. There's no room for anything else. If the forces contained here escaped, we'd be dragged back into an age of superstition, terror, death. Assuming you think we ever really left that behind. Any emergency, any major containment breach, and the lockdown goes into effect. I implemented this security measure in my first years as director. I knew we were vulnerable. I'd personally seen the cost of sloppiness. I made sure the internal lockdown could only be lifted by a directorial override, only to be used when the director is confident the sectors are safe to be opened again. This way, the director is the last line of defense. And if I screw up, it's on me, and me alone. They say the new director can launch objects up to 20 feet. Bullshit. We never recorded any distance over five. Obviously, you never read the P6 data. <laughs> Jesse, you made it. And you lifted the internal lockdown. Let's talk, Emily. Yes, of course. Listen, Emily. Screw it. Just tell her. I haven't been completely honest. I have a younger brother, Dylan. When we were kids, we found an old slide projector in Ordinary's landfill. The slides created doorways to other places. Bad things happened. Came through. That's all she gets. The rest stays locked inside. But we found help. Through one of the doorways, we... met something. A being. A being? What kind of being? It's hard to describe, but it... She helped us. We managed to turn the projector off. The bad things that came through the doorways were gone. After that, your people came, tried to grab us. I ran away. They got Dylan. I left him behind. Bureau agents took your brother? Yes. He covered it up. No one believed me. I just want to find Dylan. I've been looking for him ever since. What happened to the slide projector? It sounds like another object of power. I thought you took it. The Bureau. Along with Dylan. I've never heard of it. But around here, I assume everything's classified. You know, I looked into the ordinary AWE case files after you mentioned it. Trench and Darling were both involved. A large area of the containment sector was reserved for it. The case hasn't been active for a long time. I have no idea if anything's still there. Can you tell me more about this being you found? 
Let's hope you two get along. She's been with me ever since Ordinary. In my head. She led me to you. I call her... Polaris. As in, a guiding star. Did Polaris know about the Hiss? If she got you in here, in spite of the lockdown, she's very powerful. Which may help explain your test results. You're reading a cross... Unfortunately, I can't access them beyond the file codes. But one was P6, referring to a prime candidate for a potential future bureau director. Uh, this was logged years ago. Dylan. Is that Dylan? The other match is on something called Hedron, which must be connected to these Hedron Resonance amplifiers somehow. All I know is that Marshall went to the research sector to secure the HRA production after the his first attacked. So, Marshall seems like our best lead on Dylan. I need to go after her. How can I get to the research sector? Use my keycard. The sector elevator will take you there. Marshall is the next step. What Emily told me about ordinary, my powers being connected to things in the Bureau's past. I am so close to something. Do you feel it? Something's coming. We take turns to come for a visit. I helped you. You owe me now. And when time comes, I will come calling. Hi, Jesse. I keep finding traces of Darling, but still can't find him. Where could he be? But he's usually in his office in research, or one of his labs. Dr. Darling has quite a few, all around the Bureau. Could be hiding in any one of them. I check myself, but I don't have access to most of them. Sounds like I touched a nerve. He didn't let you into his labs? Not all of them, no. Some had volatile material. It's ridiculous. I mean, this whole place is volatile material. Could have at least thought up a more convincing lie. I mean, how can I work without access to all the data possible? This place has a bad habit of moving around, huh? So you notice the building shifts. Did you know that 39% of bureau accidents are caused by the shifts? It's true. I ran the numbers myself. So they're dangerous. Oh, very. Yet one time, a shark got shifted into a meeting room along with over 2,000 gallons of water. It was a tiger shark, Darling's pet research project. I forget what he was researching. How do people work here? You said you're an assistant? Oh, it's just a title. I'm a scientist, a researcher. I work for Dr. Darling. See, when bureau agents go out in the field, the sites of altered world events, we study the materials, the altered items they bring back. It's always something we've never seen before. And studying them requires new instruments, methodologies, sometimes entirely new fields of science. Emily really loves her job. See, there's no guidebook for what we do here. Everything that happens at the bureau, including the science, is without precedent. What exactly is the Ocean View Motel? That's a bigger question than you might think. You see, I have extreme doubts that the motel is a single place. I mean, look at all the doors inside it. Where do they all go? We know that one door leads to the oldest house, but how come we can only ever open that one door? Maybe to open a door, you have to have entered through it. So if every door leads to a different dimension, plane, reality, whatever you want to call it, then I believe that the motel is firm proof that parallel universes exist. Does Darling agree with that? I haven't told him yet. I'm waiting until I can prove it. 
What can you tell me about control points? They're nexus points of the oldest house's unique energies. Now, I wrote a 30-page proposal hypothesizing that we could siphon energy directly from them. Darling didn't even get through the first page before he turned it down. Right. And, uh, has anyone ever used them to teleport around? What? Uh, no. What, I mean, you mean physically? Uh, no, not that I've ever heard of. Why? Because that's how they work for me. What? Really? Oh my god. More tests. Let's hold off on the tests until later, okay? Okay. It's just... Wow. I, this blows my control point theories right out of the water. I love it. See you soon. Be careful out there.
Welcome to the research sector of the Federal Bureau of Control. I'm Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Somebody thought this video would make for great internal communications. I'm looking at you, Mr. Tomasi. So, this is where the magic happens. Anyway, I, I've been here for 24 years now. I've always been here. And, and through those years, we've made astonishing discoveries, authored studies of grave importance, and in all this work, there is one thing we know, and that's how little we truly know. Rest assured, we're committed to keep pushing the known laws and borders of reality, and to make the Bureau proud. So, welcome. Assuming you have the necessary clearance, and, and do follow the safety protocols. Read the manual, otherwise bad things will happen. I'm looking at you, Mr. Tomasi. So, this is where the magic happens. Anyway, I, I've been here for 24 years now. I've always been here.
training HRAs. What are they for? Do you always need to wear them? And... I've been fielding questions recently regarding HRAs. What are they for? Do you always need to wear them? And what's the deal with the hadron resonance anyway? I... Fuck. Despite what you may have heard, HRAs are not monitoring devices. We're not tracking your movements or listening to your conversations while you're wearing them. We do that regardless whether or not you're wearing an HRA. Think of them as, uh, as a uh, life preserver. Only instead of water, the, the thing HRAs protect you from is um, classified. One day that classified, not water, might pour in and you'll be glad you got, a, got an HRA keeping you afloat. And if you don't have an HRA, don't worry. It'll be uh, quick and painless. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. We're making more. What's the deal? Despite what you may have heard, we're not tracking your movements or listening to your conversations.
She's in trouble. I need to reach her. The astral plane. It's similar to an iceberg, what you see is not what you always get. Regardless, this place is vitally important to the Bureau. Most information on the astral plane is, is classified, but we can talk in broad strokes, keeping in mind that these are staggeringly complex systems, and simplification does them no justice. Now, the white non-space, the ever-present inverted black pyramid, the board, all linked, intrinsically tied to the oldest house, tied to the director, the process of choosing a director, tied to all objects of power in terms of who controls them. Yes. <laughs> What you see is not what you always get. Regardless, this place is vitally important to the Bureau. Most information on the astral plane is, is classified, but we can talk in broad strokes, keeping in mind that these are staggeringly complex systems. And simplification does...
I'm averse to using objects of power. I don't want to lean on things I ultimately can't trust. But the ashtray and the cigarette, smoking there forever, have their uses. The ashtray maze they conjure is an impossibly changing labyrinth that no one but the binder, and those the binder invites, can ever pass through. The things we hid in dimensional research, the things Darling studies, the danger and the risk involved, call for every measure of security and protection I could bring to the table. The maze, hands down, is our strongest lock. I gave Darling and his chosen crew license to pass through the maze. Lately, I've started to think I should revoke that license. Who controls them? An early hypothesis was that the mindscape of the astral plane is subjective. But that was fast proven wrong. It's an actual place, not a construct of the mind, even though it is with our minds that we enter and experience it. But then one could argue that that's the case with all reality. We've been able to record footage of the astral plane by monitoring the brain activity of those experiencing it. That is the only concrete material that has come out of the astral plane expeditions. Uh, apart from one shocking exception. In the astral plane footage, we're always in the vicinity of the pyramid. We've concluded that this, not the entire plane, is what the board controls. We have glimpsed movement, native species, always in the distance, and yet contact was made. We don't have footage of this, a technical malfunction, but when one of our astral knots returned, a brain cloud, an astral fugue, had hitchhiked a ride in his head. It ruptured out, killing the subject in question. It's a relentless predator, pursuing thoughts, minds, lethal to those the entity feeds on. Proper containment protocols are to be observed when dealing with it. <laughs>
Bureau doing with that thing? Someone answer, damn it! We need backup down here! Marshal, are you still there? Shit. We're so close. We need to hurry.
see it. Another object of power? They're just standing there, mesmerized by it. State your name for the record. Please state your name for the record. Paul Warren, astronaut, first class. And you are aware that exposure to the astral plane can result in death, disability, personal injury, corporeal untangling, cognitive collapse, loss of ego, and partial to full dementia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. And you acknowledge that your use of the astral conduit, aka the X-ray light box, is purely voluntary? Yes, I do. Perfect. Your suit is good? Yeah. Okay, you're all set. Open the door for Mr. Warren, please.
Brains were fried when I took over the object. Marshal, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Who is this? My name is Jesse Faden. I'm coming to help. Faden? Hold on. I'm sending the elevator for you. We need to talk. She got that right. is waiting for you in the luck lab, just down the hall. Just down the hall. There you are. I was starting to worry. Congratulations on your appointment, Director Faden. I'm Helen Marshall, head of Bureau Operations. Zachariah's dead then, and I assume you found his gun. 
Just call me Jesse. Trench told me to find you. He said you could help. And he told you this through the hotline. Makes sense. None of this phases her? Really? Here's the situation. Darling created the HRAs in a lab nearby. We need more if we're gonna survive this attack. My rangers can't secure the lab alone. Not against those things. We need more firepower. At least she seems to know what's going on here. She could know about Dylan. I can clear out the hiss. I'll be your firepower. That's a good answer. Is she testing me? Darling has systems in place to protect his labs. This should help you get past them. We'll talk more after you clear out the hiss. Rangers, let her through. We'll have to lock the door behind you. Sorry, but we can't risk a breach. If there's anything in this place that can improve our luck, we ought to try it out. You know, just in case. Do not touch anything. Rangers over there.
Altered item number 52A. Altered item number 52AE analysis, session two. I will begin by introducing various stimuli to the item. First, a low voltage electric shock. No response. Next, I will introduce heat via a standard Bunsen burner. No response. Next, a series of solutions will be applied, each with a different value on the pH scale from 0 to 14. No response to any value. Next, I will attempt to communicate. Can you understand me? Can you understand my words? Quack if you can understand my words. No response. This concludes session two. We'll need time to prepare further tests. E analysis session two. I will begin by introducing various stimuli to the item. First, a low voltage electric shock. This way to the lab? Okay. You must like these HRAs. Sounds like Darling built them. And most of the things around here. If Marshall can't help us with Dylan, he's our next best bet. Assuming he's not dead. Or taken over by the hiss. me here? Any idea how to make it work? Hello again, Director. It appears we have a new problem. We need to get the HRA machine working. I've replaced a couple of spark plugs, but this looks a bit more complicated. Darling must have had a system. Randomness isn't in his nature. The punch cards, the symbols, the terminals. How do they connect? I'll see what I can do. Have you checked the upper floor? Thank you. 
with these whiteboards mean? Prism Shadow. Darling's prototypes have a lot of issues. We need a new plan. We need more Black Rock Prisms to make this machine work. Darling has another lab down in the Black Rock Processing Site and Maintenance. That must be where he keeps the prisms. I've been to maintenance already. I can find my way. But how long will that take? Nothing here is simple. I need to ask her now, before I go. I need something from you first. What do you know about Dylan Faden? I knew this was coming. Lives are at stake here, and we need this machine working to save those lives. Once that is done, Director Faden, then we can talk. She's right. As much as I don't want to admit it, I'm the only one who can help. Fine. I'll get the prisms first. Dylan will have to wait just a little longer. But don't call me Director. Jesse is fine. I'll call you Faden. Here, you'll need this key card. Thanks. Emily Pope has set up a base in Executive. Once I have the prism, I'll meet you there. Right. I'll move out immediately. And keep an eye out for Darling. Finding him might be the key to stopping the hiss. With just one large scale HRA. It's there now. We are about to be exposed to a different kind of resonance. Hostile, viral, invasive resonance. I think that's, that's what the Hedron resonance amplifiers are for. Taking the protection Hedron can provide us and keeping us from being wiped out. Here, this will lead back to central research.
quarantine. I wouldn't go in there without talking to Underhill first. Even if you have, I still wouldn't go in. <laughs> Resonance is the key. Vibration, frequencies, waveforms, fields we, we didn't know were there. <laughs> it's physics. These fields in complex interaction, altering reality that comes to contact with them. Hedron is communicating with me. He's trying to warn me of something imminent. I've been using every known method to analyze the data. Exposing myself to it. I'm seeing things and overcome by compulsion. It's, it's not just data, it, it's protection. It's benign. We are about to be exposed to a different kind of resonance. Hostile, viral, Invasive resonance. I think that's that's what the Hedron resonance amplifiers are for. Taking the protection Hedron can provide us and keeping us from being wiped out. Duty down here. This place is fucking weird. This is nothing. The clocks? No, that's weird. What's weird about a bunch of clocks? Shut up! I think that's the new director. Excuse me? Are you lost? Do you normally barge into people's private workspaces? She clearly doesn't know who she's talking to. Shouldn't you be in a safe room? Why? Because of those hiss things the rangers keep going on about. Haven't you people sorted that out yet? The situation down here could spell doom for the Bureau. You mean this mold? Correct. Perhaps you could help me. I require samples of various mold strains, and the mold has made the environment far too dangerous for me to fetch them myself. Really? Mold samples? I thought this could spell doom. It could, and it will, whoever you are. The mold is spreading. We need to find the source before it spreads too far. Any samples will do that? No. Samples of five unique strains, when blended properly, will allow you to travel deeper into the pit where I've pinpointed the approximate location of the source of the mold. Okay. So, what do these samples look like? Similar to the one on my table there. I've made a list of the samples I need. Here. 
You'll find them throughout the threshold. I'll take a look. My name's Jesse, by the way. I'm sure it is. Have you worked at the FBC very long? Not long enough to understand their inane methodology. They want me to solve the mold, but how is one to solve anything when the basic molecular structure of this fungus is an utter enigma? Oh, sorry, are you asking me? It's rhetorical. The Bureau wants to control, not comprehend. But to answer your question, I'm a seasoned threshold researcher that's been brought in on a provisional basis to resolve this matter. That's all you had to say. What have you learned about the mold? Firstly, the term mold is a gross oversimplification used only to ease communication. That said, the mold itself appears to be the product of complex microorganisms. They spin the mold, building structures like minuscule cities, swiftly colonizing our dimension, and the speed of these tiny engineers relative to their size. Simply staggering! So it grows fast. If you're not going to listen, then why did you ask? So the mold is coming in from... where? We don't have a name for the threshold dimension. The origin point has been identified, but the density of the fungus makes it impossible to enter. Even if we could, I speculate that we would only find a reality entirely subsumed by the fungus. Total decomposition! It's weird how excited she is, right? What do you know about the Hiss? How could I know anything about an entity I've only just learned of? This is exactly the Bureau's problem. My work is always interrupted by these... these... superfluous matters. Calm down. Just keep your HRA on and I'm sure you'll be fine. This crude thing. I thought it was Darling's idea of a practical joke. Not quite. Just keep your head down while I handle the hiss. I need to get going. Try not to transport any spores outside the infected areas. Weed down here. Suddenly I'm really hungry. 
I wonder how this mold tastes.
This looks like a good one. gonna owe me for this. one of Underhill samples. one.
This looks like a good one. That's all five samples. I should get these back to Underhill. You look like a woman with mold for me. I found all five, but I kind of wanted to eat them. The mold has that effect on some people. Likely due to the fact it's not actually mold or even of this dimension. I suspect it is the result of two incompatible molecular structures, one dominant, coming into contact. I call it mold or fungus because it's closer in appearance and behavior than anything else we know. Except perhaps bacteria. She reminds me of my old biology teacher. Did you happen to meet any more members of my ranger detail? I didn't see any rangers. Just walking mold people. Unless... Yes. If you found mold people, you found my rangers. I refer to the creatures as hosts. They, like other unwary agents, succumbed to the appetite. But that's nothing for you to worry about. The pill I'm about to make with these samples will make the lower level perfectly safe to traverse. It has the added benefit of immunizing you against the pit's toxic spores. Now leave me to it. I need to get going. Try not to transport any spores outside the infected areas. I hate the guard duty down day. here. This place is fucking weird. This is nothing. The clocks? Now that's weird. What's weird about a bunch of clocks? Shut up! I think that's the new director.
Marshall knows something about Dylan. Is he here? Is he all right? HRAs first. They'll help save everyone, including Dylan, once I find him. Can you keep him safe? Like you do with me?
Okay, we need to find a way to Blackrock process it. That's where Marshall said we'd find a prism.
investigation, our agents discovered a light switch cord in a Butte bungalow closet. They pulled the cord and were instantly transported to the Ocean View Motel and Casino. Dream like haze. Whoa. Inside, they found a door marked with an inverted black pyramid. And just like that, it led back to the oldest house, some 2,000 miles from Montana. Now we're finding the cord in increasing numbers throughout the Bureau. Somehow the two places, they became in tune to each other. The, the actual physical location of the ocean view is, is, is a mystery. Stepping beyond its walls has so far proven impossible. A place of power, like the oldest house. During an AWE investigation, our agents discovered a light switch cord in a butte closet. They pulled the cord. I'm glad to see you're still you. Medic, what's the damage? They've each taken a few hits. We need to get them to a surgical station. Hey, thanks for bringing down that... whatever the fuck that was. But we are barely holding on here, boss. How's the situation outside maintenance? What do I tell him? The truth is harsh, but these people seem familiar with death. The hiss are everywhere. Most of the Bureau is lost. We need Black Rock Prism to make more HRAs for any survivors in the safe rooms. I'm here to check Darling's Black Rock lab. So to recap, uh, death, disaster, and imminent destruction. Another day at the FBC. But Darling's lab is just past Black Rock Processing. But I got good news and I got bad news on that front. Good news is, it's right down the hall. Bad news is, a hiss monster has decided to move in, so that's great. Monster. That's what the Rangers said. The ones that survived, anyway. But we are just treading water here, and the hiss keep coming. Salvador would know what to do, but apparently he took a security team into the containment sector just before the lockdown happened, and well, no one's seen him since. But hey, at least we got you, our fearless leader. They shouldn't rely on me. They don't know me. They don't know how I failed people. You've done a good job here, Arish, but you should take your people and get to the base and executive. You can regroup there. I'll go deal with this monster. I'm getting kind of used to them. Aye, aye, Faden. And be sure to put a bullet in that thing for me. Ranger Squad Charlie 7. Ranger Squad Charlie 7 returned from an expedition into the quarry threshold just after 0500 Zulu. Can you please state your names and describe the purpose of your expedition? Kevin Horowitz, Rupert Wells. Our mission was to map quarry grid coordinates G29. Secondary objective, as always, was to find a route from the threshold entrance and maintenance to the formation. Secondary objective was not a success. What a surprise. And did you encounter any previously unrecorded event or entity while inside the threshold? No. Nothing. Do you think we should tell him about the mermaid? Excuse me? Yeah, the mermaid. Horowitz here found this mermaid in the quarry, just sitting on some black rock. She was singing this beautiful song, and he was overcome with desire. Oh, she was so alluring. I'd say she was more enchanting than alluring. Fine, enchanting. Um... Did you tell your CO about this? No. Because it didn't happen. Nothing happened. As usual, the quarry is full of rocks. That's it. Can we go now? <laughs> Fuck you guys. Get out of here. Return from an expedition into the quarry threshold just after 0500 Zulu. Can you please state your names and describe the purpose of your expedition? Their 
objective always was to find the route from the threshold entrance and maintenance. Arish wasn't kidding about that monster. You showed me the HRA when I first got here, and the machine that makes them. Can you help me find a prism? in the oldest house where under the right conditions when the frequencies match other dimensions leak in we call these areas thresholds the quarry is one of the more stable thresholds in the maintenance sector that's that's where black rock comes from extra dimensional matter it has the unique property of blocking out a lot of frequencies a, a good thing it keeps things stable contained think of it as Paranatural lead. Our research involves many dangerous things we absolutely need to keep in check. That's what the Black Rock Line fire breaks are about. The Panopticon container cells. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, but I need the code for the quarry elevator. Oh, uh, Emily. The codes. Black Rock 665. Neighbor of the Beast. Get it? Uh, We can do that again if you... conditions when the frequencies match the dimensions leak in we call these areas thresholds the quarry is one of the more stable thresholds in the maintenance sector that's that's where black rock comes from you heard that too right matter Black rock comes from the threshold. Ari? So, the prisms must be there too. 
Think of it as paranatural lead. Our research involves many dangerous things. We absolutely need <laughs> Everything here is crazy, weird, but it feels right, like how the world should be. I am in an infinite building leading to different dimensions, and I never want to leave. Even with all the horror, I'm happy. It feels sane. Just the right kind of thing.
elevator's broken. Gotta get down the old-fashioned way.
what I expected.
And there it is, right where you led me. The HRAs, the prisms, they mean something to you. I need to get this prism to Marshall before it's too late. HRAs, then Dylan.
Pope wants us to compile all of Darling's data entries from the past month. She wants us to crack Darling's personal logs? He'll crucify us if he finds out. Who does she think she is, authorizing that kind of data breach? She must think he's hiding something. And I agree. The HRAs alone are proof Darling knew more than he let on. Had to take a detour into the quarry, but I found plenty. Here. We will start HRA production immediately. I promised I'd tell you about Dylan once you helped us. This is it? She knows. Seventeen years I've waited. Your brother is here. He was once known as Prime Candidate Six, codenamed P6. We brought him here after the ordinary event. He was groomed to be the future director. He had talents far beyond any other candidate in the program. Of course he did. We found you together. We share a bond. Are you with him now? So you kidnapped him? We took him in. Your parents vanished along with every other adult in Ordinary. Eventually, his power changed him. There were casualties. He wasn't fit to be the director. Did you know about this? Is this why you didn't bring me here sooner? Were you keeping me away? Where is Dylan? He's kept in the containment sector, in the Panopticon. My brother. I thought we were the same. What if we are? I'm going. Now. I expected as much. I need to go check on something. Something I cannot let the Hiss find. It shouldn't take long, but you must watch the Bureau while I'm gone. And remember, Dylan is dangerous. Do not let him out, Director Faden. How do I make her stop calling me that? I'm not here for them. Nothing simple here. These people took my brother, but they've accepted me without question. Are they my enemies or my friends? I need to see Dylan. I need to know. I wish you could tell me what you know, explain things. Just stay with me, okay? I could use a friend right now. numerous safe rooms with survivors inside. We're waiting on HRAs before we open them. Once we can safely bring them out, the survivors will be escorted here straight away. Wonderful. Keep me updated. Sector. Panopticon. Altered items. Maximum security prison. Dangerous. The containment sector, the Panopticon is home to the altered items we find and contain. It is a maximum security prison. 
It's a vault for the most valuable treasures on Earth. It's a powder keg big enough to blow this world to dust. A temple, a place of worship filled with idols of angry gods. It's all of these, and none of them. It's something more profound, unbelievable, unknowable, something worse. Altered items, we've found many. They appear mundane, but nothing could be further from the truth. They're all powerful, dangerous. They press heavy on our minds because that's their nature. They've been altered because we can't stop thinking about them. We put them on altars because they're used to being worshipped. This keeps them calm. We contain them, but they don't want to be controlled. We study them to discover what makes them tick. If this place were ever breached, it would be chaos of biblical proportions. Reminder, this week, any documents that suddenly appear pink, 
light red, or any shade in between must be incinerated immediately. Failure to do so will result in termination and possible bodily harm. Thank you for your attention. Reminder, this week... Someone needs help over there. Sounds like there's a man down. I'm here. 
What happened to you? I got in a little scrap. Name's Horowitz. I... Oh! Ah! Is he gonna be okay? Don't look at me like that. I'm fine. But Wells is still in there. You gotta get him out. Who's Wells? My squad mate. We were hunting a runaway altered item. We followed it down into the clocks. The clocks? A threshold. The Bureau sealed it up years back because of all the clocks. We, w we followed the altered item inside, but the way it was acting, we weren't ready. Me and Wells were the only ones to make it to the motel court. He was right behind me, but he never showed up on this side. I'll go find him. But first, you need to get to a medic. Oh, Wells is the medic. Please, you gotta get him out of there. I'll be fine, really. Roop can patch me up later. Fine. But I'll be back for you. I damn well hope so. <laughs> Just use the motel cord there. It should get you into the clocks. Sorry. The threshold. This Wells guy can't be far. <sighs> Those must be the clocks he was talking about.
Are you Wells? Your friend asked me to come looking for you. That must be Horowitz. Glad he got out. I stayed back to help the others. Did a shit job of it, clearly. You tried. That's enough. Horowitz needs your help now. How do we get out of here? We should head back through the threshold. We can look for other survivors as we go. We better hurry. Which way? Just follow the blood. Let's go. What's with the clocks? Threshold effect. This used to be a regular office lane before the thr- Manifested. The forces at play have got a hold of someone's old clock and started duplicating it. Now the office is abandoned and its clock's all the way down. find a way around let me see so you came down here for an altered item the anchor yeah like said it'd be a simple item <laughs> power that thing had. I've never seen anything like it.
things. That's O'Neill. Shit! No one else got help. That safe room is where the old Adaya cornered us. We sealed the door on the way in. We couldn't let it get out into the bureau. I'll need to come deal with that altered item later. If I open the safe room now, Wells could get hurt. When it was clear, we couldn't contain the altered item. Horowitz ordered a retreat. We got out, but Hiss was waiting for us. I took Horowitz to the motel court and went back for the others. That was brave of you. I'm the medic. It's my job.
Come on. The motel court is on the other side of logistics. Horowitz should still be there. Let's go. Hold on. Something's wrong with him. Shit. Horowitz. Oh, God, no. Wells. Make sure he's okay. I'm sorry about your friend. Thanks. And thanks for coming to get me. Horowitz's HRA must have been damaged in the threshold. Guy never put himself first. At least the anchor altered item is still locked away down in the clocks. I hope it rots down there. That altered item needs to be dealt with before it hurts anyone else. I should go back down and contain it. Head to the executive sector, Wells. They could use a medic. Thank you, Director. I'll go see what good I can do there.
This is the safe room Well showed me. The one with the altered item inside. Great. More clocks. How am I supposed to get across that? wants us to compile all of Darling's data entries in the past month. She wants us to crack Darling's personal law. Fox? He'll crucify us if he finds out. Who does she think she is authorizing that kind of data for you?
to the city and didn't come back. I don't know what Missing in Actions is, but I sure wish someone would find her. I'll help you look, Telfer. We'll find your mama together.
August 4th, 1964, we discovered the oldest house while investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. The agents found their way up into the building. Once we became aware of it, it was there. For the rest of the population, it was hiding in plain sight, a, a slippery blind spot, seemingly discouraging observation. It's a, a place of power, an ongoing AWE of its own, seemingly adhering to its physical outer constraints and yet constantly breaking the known boundaries of reality. It's, it's unstable, shifting. Note. For more details on control points and the research and process to stabilize and secure the core sectors, refer to a separate presentation. After extensive research and investigation, the Bureau made the building its headquarters on November 13th, 1968. The Federal Bureau of Control was never out in the open. This, this was always an obfuscated, classified top secret operation. So imagine our surprise when the building's observation resistant aspects began in some unquantifiable way to affect the Bureau as a whole. Investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City. The agents found their way up. P6 is what the Bureau calls Dylan. His cell's been breached. Has the Hiss found him? Are you there with him? Can you protect him?
been a long time since Dylan and I knew each other. I've wondered about him. What kind of man he'd grow up to be. Are things as hard for him as they were for me? Maybe in here, they were even harder. Is there something I can help you with? I'm Jesse, the new director. I need to get inside. New director? Right. Uh, well, okay. Hello, I'm Frederick Langston, the Panopticon supervisor. It's not the best time for a tour. We have hiss everywhere, numerous cell breaches, and system failures across the board, but you're the director, so here we go. Founded by Zachariah Trench, the Panopticon is our state-of-the-art repository for all altered items. I don't have time for this. Power and I was told Dylan Faden was kept here. Can you help me find him? Faden? Uh, sure. Darling wanted him somewhere secure and isolated away from people. He's in the maximum security cells, upper level. But there's currently a, uh, a pressing matter, ma'am. We've got an object of power loose in there. <laughs> it's wrecking the place. The Benikoff TV? It's a, it's a real doozy. Salvador took a team in to handle it, but no one's heard from them for hours. This is a Category 5 OOP we're talking about, and if we don't contain it soon, it will tear the Panopticon apart. And we don't want all those altered items getting loose, ma'am. No, trust me. Dylan's in there. Open the door, Langston. I'll handle it. If you say so. Uh, I usually tell first-timers not to touch anything, so... Uh, just do that. Here, I'll get the door for you. And please, ma'am, call me Fred. Thanks, Langston. You guys didn't bring like... Is the TV back in its box yet? There's no rush or anything, it's just, you know, an ongoing concern. Do you like working at the FBC? Sure. I mean, yeah, the drama's a bit much, but I get better benefits here than I would over at the Postal Service. I checked. Better health care. That's not to say I don't like my job, ma'am. Been here over 15 years. No one knows the Panopticon collection better than me. I'm, uh, close to them, in a way. I can't tell if that's creepy or normal here. How do you keep the altered items under control? It depends on the item. Each one has different needs. Ritualistic touches go a long way. Singing to them. Did he say singing? Flipping the lights three times, that sort of thing. It's not superstition if it works. What's the difference between objects of power and altered items? Think of them like storms. Objects of power are like tropical cyclones or hurricanes for the uneducated. They're big, rare, and scary. Of course, directors can just bind the OOP and become the eye of the storm. Altered items are more like weird thunderstorms. Some may rain frogs, some may rain corn, but they all rain something. And how does the hiss factor into all that? It's changing them, making them aggressive. Now they're all raining, I don't know, knives, knife rain. Nice metaphor. Did you work closely with Trench? Oh, he spent most of his time with Darling and all them. The inner circle. Not that I care. Trent certainly had his favorites. He did stop in occasionally to scowl and smoke. Did you know the Bureau has a no-smoking policy? It does. Just not for Trench. Still, he is the one who put aside funding for the Panopticon. The man did have vision. How did you get this job? Started as a junior agent, because my uncle knew a guy. From there, I got put on a desk until an accident left the containment sector severely understaffed. At which point, I got bumped up to management. Put in a steady eight hours a day for another 10 years, and voila, supervisor. I just picked up a gun. Or a gun picked me. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. The Panopticon. Dylan 
is close. But that object of power might wreck this place before I find him. Something went wrong with the Bureau's plan to make Dylan the next director. Marshall made it sound like it was all Dylan's fault, but how much of it was what the Bureau did to him? I don't think she's telling me everything. Is anyone there? What are you doing in there? Oh, thank God. Look, someone has to watch this object at all times, or it deviates. My shift replacement never showed up. Can you help me? Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. There's an emergency. I'll come back, I promise. Okay. Okay, just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer.
That's the object of power. I need to cleanse it.
Salvador, the head of security, his team didn't stand a chance against the Hiss. No one here does. with the TV. Now I can find Dylan.
Dylan. He's so close. here. He might be nearby. Or maybe the hiss got to him. I don't know. Jesse, listen. Dylan's here. With us. He just walked in. He says he is giving himself up. He's been affected by the hiss, but, but he is different than the others. We must isolate him. I'm on my way. We need to get back. I have to see my brother. Eyes open. Hey, what can I do? Oh, you're back. 
Oh, thank you, thank you. If, if I look away, I don't know what this thing will do. You have to get me out of here. The door can only be opened by the Panopticon supervisor. That's Langston, if he's still around. Langston. Yeah, I know him. I'll go ask him how to get you out. Please hurry. My eyes, they can't. They can't. Hey, calm down. Just focus. What's your name? Focus, right. My, my, my name's Philip, and I think I can hold on for a bit. It's just my eyes. My eyes hurt so much. Just hang on, Philip. Philip up in a cell? He's watching a refrigerator and very rapidly losing it. Philip? Oh shit, I forgot about fridge duty. He's been in there for over a day, I totally forgot. You forgot about him? There's a lot going on. The hiss, the Benikoff TV. Considering the number of things I'm juggling, ma'am, I think it's- Listen, it's fine. We just need to get him out of there. He said you'd be able to open the cell door? Yeah, I can unlock it on my terminal. There. Done. Door. Open. But Philip can't just leave. The fridge is behaving erratically. Ocular contact is the only thing that seems to placate it. If we don't have someone in there watching it 24-7, people will die. I'll figure something out. I'm pretty good with these things. Being pretty good with altered items isn't standard bureau procedure, ma'am. He doesn't know us very well. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. like the board, but I can't understand it. Fuck? change something?
I told Salvador it was dangerous, but no. How'd it go? Where's Philip? Philip's gone. Something happened before I could get him out. <sighs> Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. But if you're here, then who's watching the fridge? The fridge is fine now. I took care of it. You don't just take care of altered items. What did you do? I touched it and wound up in the astral plane. This thing was in there. It was huge, had one big eye, wasn't friendly. We've been getting reports from the astronauts lately about something fitting that description. The astral plane is usually connected to our world through objects of power, not altered items. If this thing is linking itself to altered items, then it's clearly powerful. This may happen again. Do you think that thing is what got Philip? Must have been. The Panopticon is a dangerous place. The agents all know the risks. But since you're some sort of altered item whisperer, I've got a list of others for you to corral. The hiss are causing containment breaches left, right, and center. Here, start with these. I'll see if there are any others missing while you're gone. My life just got a whole lot easier. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always.
$28,000 item to worry about.
This is the safe room Well showed me. The one with the altered item inside.
rangers had such a hard time with that one. item up there. That's no normal piece of paper.
this time, sir. I found all those missing altered items. All of them? Wow, you have a gift, ma'am. But those weren't all of the altered items missing from the Panopticon. The hiss must be making them restless. We've had several more containment breaches. How many of these things did he lose? How many? Just a couple. Should be no problem for you. I really appreciate your help. Really, just super. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. did like flamingos. Too... pink.
she had to write everything in a made-up gibberish code. Fucking Marshall with her CIA spy shit. God. I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing. Even got rookie status. Anyway, not the point. My old ranger squad was a great bunch. There was six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hepton, Stoll, and Thompson. They were supposed to get back from an expedition yesterday. We had beers and wings planned. Problem is, they weren't here when Darling handed out the HRAs. Then they had nothing protecting them from the Hiss. You see, they prepped for the worst, but I think that we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck, and I really don't want the Hiss to get them. Could you find them for me? Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for them, Arish. And I won't let them stay his. I have to go. Me too. Fuck, if they're in there and we go around that way. emitted from the HRAs is purely antithetical to every variant of the Hiss signal I can arrange. How did Darling create? No, <laughs> it's happening. After all these years, Dylan is here. Oh, but am I too late? How is he? I need to know. He's clearly been affected by the Hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. Maybe what makes you so special is genetic. He was a prime candidate. Or maybe it's Polaris protecting him, something else affecting the situation. I need to run tests. He seems... More in control, more present. I want to see him. My brother? Or is he? Of course. Now, Marshall set up an HRA warded cage to contain him. It's on the upper floor, up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Jesse, be careful. Rangers? I don't know if I like taking orders from small. The thunders who distorts you. You are a worm through time. The thunders who distorts you. Happiness comes, white pearls, but yellow and red in the eye. Through a mirror and inverted his mirror, right? Leave your inside the breath door. Push the fingers through the surface into the way. You've always been a mirror. You walk as the patrol. We stand around you while you dream. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. Through time, the thunders who distorts you. Happiness comes. What you are a worm through time. Shit. The thunders who distorts you. That's Dylan. White pearls can you hear me? Red in the eye. Oh, you come on, my Dylan. I'm here. I found you. Into the way. You've always been a mirror. Do you know who I am? Oh, you know me. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Always a good sign. Do you know who you are? Not Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. P6. But I'm better now. The hiss made me better. Push the fingers through the surface into the wet. You've always been the new you. You want this to be true. Please. <sighs> no. 
Not exactly the reunion I'd hoped for. It feels good to say those words. I want to say them. They sound good. They make me feel good. Don't you want to say them too? No. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to you. help me. You! You came in through the hole in you! We let you in! You've always been here! The only true! A copy of a copy of a copy of a copy! Stop it! Orange peel! Shit! Shit! He can see you. This is not safe. We found Polaris together with my sister when we were very small, in ordinary, in the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. But she didn't help when Trench took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. And <laughs> she didn't help when they locked me up for years. Time for a pause. We build you till nothing remains. The air cracks and the truth will emerge out of you. You are home. The Bureau brought the slide projector back here with me. And the Bureau did what the Bureau does. They used it. And they found... They opened the door up to the hiss. That's the only thing I can thank them for. There. There it is. We stopped the Altered World event in Ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. Pioneer Worm is a tune you can't stop humming in a dream. Baby, 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 yeah. Just plastic. So safe. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Funny. I welcomed the hiss. I let it in. To get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris is using you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. If we shut this off the slide warm. projector, maybe, maybe that will stop the hiss. Your regulations. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. The hiss is the better option. Go to the prime candidate program in the containment sector. I have the key card to get you there. Salvador wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. You can help me. We can end this. You are one through time. You are a time. The thunder's who distorts you. Happiness comes white pearls, but yellow and red. I don't know what else I'm hoping to find here. Dylan. Can we talk? I'd like to tell you about a dream I had last night. Off to a good start. Okay. I'm listening. I was back in ordinary before all of this happened. But in the dream, I was alone. It was just me. I was the only child, a girl. My name was Jesse Dylan Faden. But then the Bureau came and caught me, brought me back here, locked me up. Have you ever noticed that our names, Jesse, Dylan, they could be girls' names, boys' names, could be anything. 
Don't you find that weird? I find that weird. Sure. What the hell was that? Is he trying to mess with me? You are alarmed through time. The thunderstorm distorts you. Happiness comes. Maybe Dylan's still in there. Maybe there's a way to reach him. I'd like to talk to my brother, please. Dylan? Dylan would like to tell you about a dream he had just now. This again? I was going to be the new director of this place. I helped you get a job here, so that we could be together. You were an office assistant. You'd make coffee and deliver the mail, and there was always plenty of work to do. And it stayed that way, forever and ever. It was nice. Really nice. That's debatable. But here's the strange thing. The dream shifted, and none of it was real anymore. It was a game. We were in a game, and it was a fucking boring game. But you couldn't stop playing. And then it shifted again. Or maybe it was another dream already. Or maybe I'm just confusing them. But in this other dream, it was more like a musical. This is an ordinary song about an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. It's the ordinary story. She worked an ordinary job in an ordinary office. Something, 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 something. And that's all I can remember of that dream. Maybe that's for the best. You are alarmed through time. The thunder's us. Maybe I can learn more about the hiss from him. Can we talk? I just had an interesting dream. Oh, shit. That's fascinating, but let's talk about the hiss for a change, yeah? This dream was about the hiss. Uh, best I'm gonna get. In my dream, the hiss had broken free of this prison, this house. I'd set it free. And the president himself was there to welcome us. He was the first one to take the hiss in. Spread the word. At first, many people thought it was horrifying. That he was horrifying. But also, many people who heard his words wanted to welcome the hiss in. And slowly, more and more of them came around until the whole world was brought together by the hiss. It was wonderful. Okay, thanks for sharing that. For the record, that will never happen. Not as long as I'm alive. The thunderstorm distorts you. Happiness comes. White pearls but yellow. Maybe I'm just here to punish myself. Any new dreams you'd like to share, Dylan? I'm glad you asked, sister. This dream, like all dreams now, felt very real. Like reality. And reality now feels like a dream. Maybe it's all a dream. Maybe it's all real. Dream where my brother endlessly tells me about his dreams. I was in a dark place. And there was a dark man there. His name was Mr. Door. And he told me that there are many worlds. Side by side, on top of each other. Some inside of others. In one world, there was a writer who wrote a story about a cop. 
in another world, the cup was real. Doris said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. I asked him how I could reach these worlds. I wanted to bring the hiss there. But he didn't want to help me. He didn't like the idea. What did he know? I'm not wild about the idea myself. Through time, the thunderstorm distorts you. Happiness comes while the pearls be. Here we go again. Once more with feeling. Let me guess. You want to tell me about your dream? Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm having a dream right now. Oh. That's new. In this dream, I'm standing in the corner watching Jesse and Dylan talk about this very dream. This very dream! He said just now! And repeated it again now! I'm standing there and watching and that's all I can do. It's as if I'm trapped there. And that's all I have to say about that dream. Okay, okay, Dylan. That's good. Is he still in there? Or is this the hiss playing mind games? I don't know.
and P7. After North Moor stepped down, I doubled every effort to find new prime candidates. There was no one. No one but me. That wasn't good enough. I pushed hard. I never wanted the Bureau to end up in that situation again. The Bureau needs a director. Always. When my time reaches an end, I want more options on the table. P1 through P5 were all false leads, dead ends and disappointments. Then, P6. Dylan Faden. He fell into our arms. No parents. They're gone. Casualties of an AWE. The boy has exceptional talent. The oldest house will be his home. We'll build him from the ground up. He'll be trained and taken care of. Darling can be in charge of this project. I can't. I'll stay away. I will not fail the boy like I failed my own family, my daughter and my wife. We weren't careful enough back then. Something came home with me. I took work home. My Susanna got sick. When I realized my mistake, I wanted to bring her here, for Darling to do what he could. Kate flat out refused. Civilian doctors treated our daughter, but they didn't have a clue. She died. Kate left me. Same old story. That was a long time ago. The Bureau is all I have now. And the prime candidates are our future. There are two. P6 and P7. We're spoiled for choice.
only thing creepier than one mannequin is a few dozen of the damn things. I can see you're upset, Meg. Why don't you tell Uncle Mr. Bones what's wrong? I did bad on my clairvoyance test. You can't ace every test, Meg. You see, everyone has different brains. Some brains can talk to each other. We call this ESP. ESP? <laughs> Some brains can lift objects, like a baseball. Talk about a fly ball, eh, Meg? <laughs> no interruptions! So who cares if you fail your clairvoyance test? Maybe your brain can throw baseballs, or talk to dead people, or make friends blind. Once we know what your brains can do, we'll know what job to give you. And if your brains are just right, you'll get to sit in the big chair. <laughs> What if I don't want the big chair? What if I don't want the big chair? Everyone wants the big chair, Meg! That's why we're all here. Use those brains to listen for once, or the only chair you'll get in is the one with straps.
I wish things had gone differently in ordinary for us. Ordinary. There's so much coming together in this one case. A new object of power, something we have not seen before. I mean, coming from me, that's, that's saying something. And the boy, Dylan Faden. Prime candidate six. And the sister as well. I mean, once we catch up with her, but the, the boy had so much potential. We're talking Northmore level readings here. And, and I don't want to invoke his name, but it's completely different circumstances here. It's remarkable. There was an incident. Yes. We lost a valuable member of our team, yes. Excessive force. Dylan has so much. But he's, he, he's just a kid. Like, I'll take the blame. He, he, he needs some slack. I mean, boys will be boys. He's exceptional and under a lot of stress. Roberts got killed. It's an unfortunate accident, that's all. Marshall needs to realize this. We will make this work. We'll make this work. Wishing won't change things. Ordinary. Finding the projector Ordinary. will. Coming together in this one case. A new object of power, something we have not seen before. I mean, coming from me, that... Prime candidate six. And the sisters. Is this what Dylan wanted me to see? It doesn't matter. We need to find that projector. All the times I felt paranoid, I was right. The Bureau could have given me the answers, but they just stood by and watched me. We used to play there all, we used to play there all the time. Me and Dylan, and other kids as well. We loved it. This time, I remember was different. We found a way in, deeper into it, like it had shifted. We went inside and that's where we found the slide projector. A dump is a place for lost things, things that have been thrown away. Did you ever feel that way when you were growing up, Jesse? What? No. Yes, but that has nothing to do with- Was there a slide projector at your home when you were small? N no. <laughs> Those were before your time, I suppose. But your family did look at photos together, maybe. In one form or the other? Maybe. Hmm. When was this? Can you remember? At parties? Barbecues? How did it make you feel? Did your parents ever show pictures that embarrassed you? Was alcohol ever involved at these parties? Did your parents drink? Did that make you uncomfortable? No! That's just stupid! Come on! That has nothing to do with this. Nothing! The slide projector- Let me ask you this. As a child, did you ever fantasize about worlds inside pictures? Inside a painting? You know, stepping into a painting, 
into a hidden world, escaping and finding adventure there? Away from your parents. I don't... I... I don't think so. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't know. Me and Dylan, and other kids as well. They studied what happened in ordinary here. That's the place to start looking. I were both prime candidates. Experiments.
We're going back home. Of course we are. It started there, and it's... Never... gone away. There's gotta be a way to rotate these tracks. Maybe there's a control panel nearby. Something's blocking it.
listening to America Overnight, celebrating 29 years shining a light in the shadows. Thank you for staying with us. Here's our first caller. Hi. What I'm about to tell you, if they found out, I don't know what would happen. If who found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was an industrial accident, but this is something else. Something nobody talks about. Ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, caller. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it wasn't an industrial accident. I mean, that's what they said. But that's bullshit. Whoa, please watch the language, caller. It may be 2 a.m., but we're still a family show. I, I'm sorry. It's just my brother lived there. They said the town was destroyed, but it wasn't. I went there. The people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase, there is no salvation written anywhere? I'm... I, I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in 23, a village called Hor Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces, but we know the truth. A mass abduction. As predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Reagan. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Now I warned you about the language, caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. And good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there. America Overnight will be right back. You're listening to America Overnight. Celebrate... There's a curious correlation with the yet unknowable forces intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects, a gun, a, a television, a, a supposedly haunted house. So clearly humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life popular culture, urban legends, but we are observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there is something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? A byproduct, a reflection, a projection. We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions or die trying. There is a curious correlation with Unknowable forces intruding upon our world. Evaluation of Dylan Faden, formerly P6, performed by Dr. Carla Vaughn. The questions asked here correspond to the fifth iteration of the Gunner's psychological assessment. Are you ready, Dylan? Let's begin then. In a single word, describe the world around you. Where's Casper? Dr. Darling is out of the building today. He's never out. He didn't want to come, did he? He never visits, not since Roberts. T tell Darling it wasn't my fault. I couldn't control it yet, but I can now. I learned. I... Will you tell him? In a single word, describe the world around you. A prison. A cold, empty prison. 
Not even a poster on the wall. Mm-hmm. What is the next number in the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? 18. What day is it today? How the hell would I know? It's not like you give me a calendar. You find a rabbit in the woods. It is breathing, but not moving. You cannot see any blood. What do you do? Leave it. Expand on that. It doesn't matter. The rabbit's not real. None of it's real. What day is it today? Do you enjoy asking people questions that can't be answered? Is, is this what gets you up in the morning? What you dreamed of doing as a scared, stupid little girl? Can you describe a dog to me? In Ordinary, we had a friend. Nosebleed Neil. And when it all went crazy, you know what I mean. Nosebleed Neil turned into a dog. Or something like a dog. What day is it tomorrow? Fuck off! I don't know! There is no calendar! How can I fucking know? Dylan, calm down. Fuck you! Fuck you and fuck Casper! Hey, hey! hey are you watching this, you old fuck? Did you send your bitch because you're too scared of me? Where is Casper? Security, get a team in here. I need... And of Dylan Faden, formerly P6 before... See what they have on ordinary. It's all here. Our home, our school, the woods, the dump. mentioned a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Yes. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. 
I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Sane. What? I don't... No matter. It suits you very well. The poem. How you see things. Maybe you wrote it yourself? I didn't. No matter. You've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um... It's this... I feel... an emptiness. A yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No. No. Dylan's not dead. And that's not even it. You're referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood? Polaris. She's come back. After a long time, she's calling me. In a dream I saw, she... She showed me things. Jesse. It felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in Ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown? That you believe Polaris caused? No, it wasn't an accident. There was no industrial accident, and Polaris didn't cause it. She saved me and Dylan. Jesse. No! It was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly, but they took Dylan. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something... Something hugely important is going to happen. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. And a poem, love. landfill here in the middle of New York, and nobody saw a thing. Pretty unbelievable.
should check that lab. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I, I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next.
find the others. Naudis boy left, said the son of Anniki Tähti. My assistant will keep work in the club and the house standing. Lomille lumps, holiday humps. How can anyone even get out of here while the building's sealed? Let alone go on holiday. Dylan's a lost cause. I know I struggled to see this, but we contained him now. I wish I had sided with Marshall. Back when it's just one person, so many dead. I thought his youth was an asset. I'd too much too soon. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there, that's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I don't know when.
gotten in here too? All right. Let's get cleaning, she said, cocking her gun. Ajoittain noin kymmenen metriä. Illalla tuuli heikkiä. Kutuista hyvä näkymys. Suomenlahden länsiosa pohjoitetaan eri. Noin 14 metriä sekuntia. Kuntapäivällä ja illalla tuunataan valtavaa tuulta neljästä kuuteen metriä sekuntia. Myöstä alkaen tuuli tyyppi. Selkämeren eteläosa 6-10 metriä sekunnissa. Pohjoisosa, merenkurkku ja perämeri suunnataan vaihtelevalla kuluttaa 30 metriä sekunnissa. Hyvä näkyy. Sää rannikko asetellaan tänään kello 11. Kotka rankki 16 asti. Bokashär 17, Kaakko 3,
There's something up ahead. Do you see it? Sama po zvenska! Ej, Ben! Orofin, holidays holy. Did you miss me? Did you have peace in your song? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Park don't make a wound. You did good. Take my cassette player. You can borrow it. The song is a present from my friends to you. It will get you through the maze so you can do your job. Of course it did. He gave me his cassette player. It'll get me through the maze, huh? The janitor always has the keys.
was awesome. Projector. The expedition of the slides came in 36. What Darling brought back changed everything. Slide projector. I led the expeditions into Slidescape 36. They told me not to go. The director should not put himself in danger. I told them to fuck off. I've seen action before and I had to witness this myself. To find some meaning in all of this. I couldn't sit on my ass. Alone with my thoughts, my memories. Anything but that. Those who survived were deeply affected by what we found there. By what Darling brought back. It changed everything. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing remains to be seen. But I did find my meaning in that desert. A sound, like a needle drilling in cutting through the containment suit reverberating in the base of my skull. My whole being. Darling said it was nothing. But he was wrong. It's been there ever since, growing into a certainty, into an understanding of what's at stake here, what kind of a threat we're facing, and what must be done to stop it. projector was how this all began. What started in ordinary ends here. You, me, Dylan. We've all come full circle. There's a doorway here, to where Dylan and I went, where the projector took us, where we met you. The bureau opened the same door here, but there's just an echo now. Are you close? Just on the other side? Projector's not here. Moved again. What did Darling do with it? I've got to find out.
projected image from each slide is a, a physical portal into another dimension. Only one slide remains. Dylan's sister burned the rest in ordinary before we could intercept. The text on it, color slide film, this side towards screen, and the number 36. The topography of slidescape 36 bears deep wave marks. On the slide and in the distance, there's a formation of five pillars, like crude, outstretched fingers. There were casualties on our first expedition. Communication is an issue. There is no sound there, as if you've gone deaf. And radios don't work. Correction, a resonance from an unknown source, in part within the range of audible frequency. It acts in unpredictable ways, causing feedback loops that can tear you apart. Trench insists he heard something else. It made his ears bleed. Our equipment found no evidence of anything beyond the primary resonance. Trench's medical tests show nothing amiss. Topography of slidescape 36 bears deep wave marks. On the slide and in the distance. Expedition 3, we located the source of the resonance in Slidescape 36. It is an entity, a living organism of a considerable mass. I I've named it Hedron based on its physical shape. Hedron? We 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 we've built a Was that for it. you? Did he bring you here? Is that why you brought me here? You're here. You're here. They have you. I know you. I remember her from ordinary. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm Dr. Casper Darling, and this, this is my final message. It's not the end. But after this, I won't, I won't. I exposed myself to Hedron Resonance fully. It, it is, it's changing me. I, I've seen shown so much. Slidescape 36 was where Hedron stopped the spread of another. It's, oh, it's terrifying. It really is. It's another source of resonance. Trench was exposed to this other. It will now spread.
I've done everything I can to stop the Hedron Resonance amplifiers. I, I don't know if it'll make a difference. I, I, I won't be here when it happens. I, I should have told him any more. I'm being said one more lesson. Something wonderful, I think. Expedition 3. We located the source of the resonance in Slidescape 36. It is an entity, a living organism of a considerable mass. I I've named it Hedron based on its physical shape, the part that we can perceive. I honestly think there's the resonance it emits, the frequencies. We've, we've never seen anything like it. We, we, we built a container for it, and, and we brought it in. This changes everything. It is beyond our understanding. We have brought so many questions with us through that hole in the wall. I will dedicate... <laughs> I'm never going home. Hang on, I'm coming. HR8 to lock the door. I have to rip it off to get in. Are you sure? Okay, I'll be there. Hang on.
poster comes down and there's nothing there. It's just the cell and death. I was wrong. There was never anything there. Hello? Polaris, are you there? You are worn through time. The thunder song distorts you. Happiness comes. White pearls and gold. Federal Bureau of Control, how may I help you? I need those field reports typed up and in management's hands first thing the tomorrow. The Bureau's the best at what it does, protecting everyday Americans from farm threats. There's the new girl, standing around daydreaming when she should be getting work done. I mean, who the hell does she think she is? The director? Who's going to 
do it today. He's the nerve of this woman. Who does she think she is? Someone has to take it to him. Better her than me. Are you sure you are not lost? Maybe you can find yourself in the director's office. Oh, great. I was just waiting for my mail. Just leave it on the desk there, please. <clears throat> please, take the outgoing mail as well. Thank you. What? What is happening? This isn't me. I'm not me. I can't. Why can't I feel you? Oh, I've forgotten something. I can't think. Oh, I'm lost. Oh, where are you? I can't feel anything. I... I don't want to be alone here. Where am I? What is this? I want it end! Wake up, please. I want to go home. You should keep trying. You are getting closer. I it's need to go fade. inside. I need to keep moving. I won't let them win. That's how it happened. The hiss got Trench first. He turned on the projector. He let them in. I have to remember the hiss. The hiss is the enemy. This is all inside my head. The hiss burrowing in. I'm trapped in here. Over. This is nonsense. It stops now. I need to get to Trench's office. I will fight this. 
I will find a way to push them out. <laughs> Welcome back. I knew I chose a I need my gun. The thunder sauce stores you. You are a worm through time. The thunder sauce stores you. I know what I must do. Start at the beginning. I should have seen it earlier. This is my mess to clean up. My fight. No one else's. I am the director. Hello. This is Dr. Casper Darling. I have a classified message for the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. I have sad news. Pedrin is gone now, but it was not a source. It was a catalyst. Do you understand? You must go to my office, the end game. It will be revealed. I can't... This is what Dylan wanted all along. But there is something. I can feel it, but I don't know what. The motel is a place of power, of change, a place to pass through, connecting everything. This is a dream inside my head. Why shouldn't it take me anywhere I want to go? Grow brighter around one constant. They revolve. Hedron is dead, but you're alive here in me. Maybe Hedron put you in our heads when we met her. Maybe you were always there. And she was just trying to teach me how to trigger you. Maybe I'll never understand. Maybe I don't need to. Trench was the first to be corrupted by the Hiss. Slowly, over the years. His need for control only made it worse. 
It was Trench who took the projector to the nostalgia department. He opened the door to the hiss. Just like that. With Hedron dead, the hiss tried to corrupt me too. But I'm stronger than them. We're stronger. They're waiting. They'll try to stop us. My sister had this dream. Bad dream. And the whole world was dreaming with her. Dylan? She convinced herself that she was awake. She's always been stubborn. And her dream. I had to wake her up. I had to rip down the poster she had been staring at. Cut off her eyelids to make her see. To save her. The more you die, the thunder saw distorts you. Happiness comes white clothes. But you know, and red. I know he's still there somewhere. Locked inside. I know, because that's how it was for me.
Dylan's in a coma. I don't know if there's anything of him left in there. If he'll ever find his way back. The portal's been closed, but the hiss is still in the oldest house. And the lockdown can't be lifted as long as any trace of it remains. I'm working on a solution with my management team, but there is still a long road ahead. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. We're in this together. You... and I. Shawshank Redemption. That's the name of the movie I was thinking of earlier. Not important, but that was it. Reflection trapped in the darkness of the coffee I nurse. The rain turned the lights of the city into a mosaic on the windows. The day's paper lists all the things wrong in the world. The list grows longer by the day. The difference between the morning and the night. Coffee. Whiskey. No other difference. The alarm goes off at 5 a.m. It feels like I just closed my eyes. It's dark. I sit up on the bed in the gloom. I get up, I shower. The driver waits for me downstairs, takes me to the oldest house. An old man stares at me in the car window. It's raining. It's dark. Late at night, he brings me back here. It's not a home. It's a room where I sleep in. Waking up just as tired as I was before going to bed. Endless grind. <laughs> 